Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you the behind the scenes of the four portrait lighting strategies that I use in an overcast day. The model in this photo shoot was Sienna, and she was also acting in a reality show Karma on HBO Max. Do you still remember the horrible day that the Bay Area sky turned orange? The photo shoot took place just before that day. We were expecting a sunny day, but things just didn't happen as planned. I started with natural light only, and then added a fill flash and another one so as pretty. the hair light. Can you brush the hair that is closer to the camera? Beautiful. Yes, there. And look, keep looking at the flower. Bear in mind that two things will happen in an overcast day. Number one, both the background and the subject need more light. Number two, the ambient light hitting the background and the subject is even and soft. So, when I exposed for Sienna, the background was also properly exposed. On contrary, in a sunny day, the background and the subject usually have different exposures, and that's why a flash is needed to balance it out. As a portrait photographer, I ask myself all the time, where's the light coming from? how intense it is, and is it soft or hard? The natural light was coming from the camera right. It was soft and intense. And look at me, good! I'm gonna step closer. When Sienna was looking at me, I could see split lighting on her face, which means half of her face was lit while the other half was in the shadow. When she was looking away from the natural light, I could see broad lighting, which means the broad side of her face was lit, and this is good for a person with a slim face feature. And look at Marlena. Look up. Love it. Good. When Sienna's nose was pointing at the light, the short side of her face was illuminated, and this is short lighting. Now, I'm adding a flash. Before turning on the flash, I exposed for the ambient light to make sure it was properly exposed. In an overcast day, both the background and the subject tend to have the same ambient exposure, so the subject might seem a little too bright with a flash. Oops, too bright. So if your subject is too bright, just bring down the power of the flash. Now I'm at 116. I'm going to bring it down to, uh, let's see, 164. Beautiful. Oh yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Same expression. Love it. Love it. I like how you brush your hair down, down, down a little more. Yes, here. Good. Good. Amazing. Good. This is a comparison of natural light and a flash in an overcast day. Well, I have to be honest, I prefer the one with natural light, because it looks lighter and more comfortable. But I think the flash in this case created bigger catch lights in her eyes. I've also added a second flash as the hair light, and at the same time, I wanted to replicate the golden hour which was obviously missing in an overcast day. So I put a full CTO gel in front of a second flash to warm up the color. The golden hour didn't look realistic when the flash was placed behind Sienna. Okay, let me see how I can fix it. So I placed the flash on the side as if the golden hour was coming through the tree. Oh, sure. This is right. Oh, wow! Cool. 
Oh my gosh, this is mind blowing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this. Good. Excellent. As inspired by Padres' tutorials, the bad light has to be far away from the subject so that it can touch the background. Good. Look at me. Good, good, good. Beautiful, dear. Look at the book. Look at mama. Smile, mama. Brush your hair. Good. Here, Sienna's hair was blending into the background. In order to create separation, I used a bad light. Still a test shot. The bad light was also hitting part of her face. That means it was not angled correctly, so I need to make some changes. And up a little bit. Good. Now look at me. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. It was almost the end of the photo shoot. I wanted to underexpose the ambient light completely to make the background dark and light up Sienna with two flashes. However, her blue outfit will not create much color contrast with a black background. So I asked her to change to her orange flowy dress. <sighs> the ambient light has almost been completely underexposed to make the background very dark. The front flash was to illuminate Sienna, while the one at the back was the hair light. Okay. If you can look at somewhere, look away from the camera and do the same thing. Okay, one, two, three. Wow, and try to look that way, that side. Oh, I like it. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, like this, like this. Good. Love the wind. Hold it for a little longer. Okay. Just like what I always do in a sunny day, I will also underexpose the ambient light by two or three stops in an overcast day to create dramatic portraits. Let me also show you the scenario when I turned off all the flashes and used the natural light only, and I exposed for Sienna. Here's a comparison of natural light only versus a flash. There's no right or wrong, and it is only a matter of photography style. What looks interesting to me is that when I use a flash as the main light, I can create something that a human eye cannot see and wow my clients. So, as a summary, in an overcast day, you can come up with four strategies. Strategy number one, you can shoot in natural light and expose for the subject and the background should also be properly exposed. Strategy number two, 
you can use a flash as a fill light. However, since the subject and the background tend to have the same ambient exposure in an overcast day, adding a flash might be a little bit too much. Strategy number three, you can use a flash as a hair light to separate the subject from the background. Strategy number four, you can use a flash as the main light and underexpose the ambient light by two or three stops. The background will be very dark as you do so, and a photo will be very stunning if your subject is wearing a bright outfit. I hope you like this video. Please give me a like if you find the information useful, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. We're Photo Sprouts Photography Workshops in San Francisco and Palo Alto. Equipment is provided for beginners so that they don't have to buy a camera to come to a photography class.